jumping is the placing on the ground in tactical areas, stocks of any commodity over and above those normally carried on wheels by first and second line transport. Dumping normally involves ammunition, engineer stores, mines, explosives, and defense stores, which are brought forward from communication zone depots to core replenishment points, ammunition points, or even directly to a delivery point or commodity point by core or division transport. During defensive operations, dumping in gun positions, defended areas, and localities is conducted to ensure sufficient combat supplies and essential commodities are available to enable troops to fight for a specified period. In withdrawal operations, it may be necessary to establish small dumps, particularly of fuel and ammunition along withdrawal routes and or adjacent to designated intermediate defensive positions where withdrawing units can replenish. During offensive operations, sufficient ammunition to meet the artillery fire plan requirement is usually dumped at gun positions or within formation areas. All combat arms unit echelons are stocked before the attack begins. Artillery units retain their basic load on wheels and tracks and use dumped ammunition whenever possible. At that stage, we'll have established the link up here at the demolition, or sorry, at South When the commander's plan calls for a dumping program, staff checks are carried out by the operations staff who specify the commander's requirements, by the arms who determine the commodities, locations, and quantities required, and by the logistics staff who state the resources available and how commodities can be transported. My call sign is Echo 29 Thanks sir. Okay. Anything else? That's it, sir. Sir, this briefing covers the period 1700 till uh, 1000 hours today. Special staff considerations involve a warning order which must be issued to all concerned as soon as a dumping program is contemplated. Close liaison with higher formation concerning the policy on the provision and transport of commodities to be dumped. The possible compromise of the commander's plan by enemy observation of new dumps and abnormally heavy traffic in the forward area. The need for communication security. Good road discipline, not only within the dumping column, but also for other traffic that might pose an interference problem and the possible need for reserved routes for dumping programs. Sufficient resources being made available at loading and offloading points and security at the dump sites which is normally provided by the receiving unit. Small-scale dumping produces few difficulties and is carried out within the scope of normal DP activities. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. A large-scale program would use core transport resources. If these are insufficient, then the following must be considered. All second-line transport must be regarded as a pool. Second line vehicles may have to be offloaded and released to reload at the RPs. In this case, the staff must indicate the priority of offloading or designate the quantity of certain commodities, especially ammunition, which must remain on wheels. The formation maintenance load may be used to commence the dumping program. If used, the maintenance load must be reconstituted within the time parameters of the program. 
When resupply must take place concurrently with dumping operations, commodity points, or central DPs may be established to ease the burden on transportation resources. Effective communications are critical throughout the program. Many adverse conditions may befall a dumping program necessitating changes to the plan. Control of a dumping program via landline is preferred. However, in many instances, control will be exercised by radio through existing logistic command nets, which can be augmented by the military police net. Prior to issue of final orders, a coordinating conference or liaison officer visits may be necessary between the officer in charge of the dumping program and all units tasked in support. Noted on the last slide, 13 of May. Back at the transport unit location, vehicles are being serviced and drivers are completing mechanical and safety inspections on their task vehicles. Dumping, in the final analysis, is a movement problem and is the responsibility of the disc group or brigade group service battalion. Their staffs must be given sufficient freedom to implement the dumping order in whatever manner seems best. And 404, as mentioned, 150 for 401 and 100 for 403 and 100 for 404. Ammunition of the type and quantity required is loaded on vehicles at the core ammunition point, or designated replenishment point. An LO from the transportation unit, or HQ implementing the program, is positioned at the ammunition point to ensure the correct commodities are loaded, that delivery priorities are maintained, and that section or packet commanders adhere to their fixed time schedule. Should a problem or change in priorities develop, the LO is in a position to amend delivery schedules and advise the appropriate units and control agencies. Thunderbird point. Over. At predetermined locations along the route, traffic control posts are established to ensure the smooth flow of traffic. Priority is always given to loaded vehicles. Due to the large number of vehicles involved in a dumping program, orders should contain a detailed recovery plan. In any dumping program, a forward regulating center is established to exercise control of the operation in the forward area. The FRC regulates the flow of material to the sites maintaining a tally of loads and quantities by dump site maintains current information on the status of the program, coordinates the provision of guides, and exercises control of traffic. It is normally manned from the resources of an existing headquarters, such as a transport company command post, or a service battalion forward logistics control center. The FRC is staffed by an officer from the responsible functional headquarters staff, an officer from the transporting unit, an LO and guides from the unit receiving the dump stores, a military police traffic representative, a communications detachment, and a small clerical staff. Site Alpha is open now. We're moving yeah, yes. The allocation of vehicle loads to dump sites or gun positions is determined by the specialist representative at the FRC. Normally, a transport packet would be split, allowing all dump or gun positions to be stocked concurrently. At the dump site, the receiving unit guides position the vehicles and they are unloaded. Attention must be paid to track discipline and camouflage. Material handling equipments are used whenever possible to assist in vehicle offloading and with the ground positioning of ammunition or stores. This equipment must be arranged for during the planning stages of the dumping program.
staffs may consider the use of utility or medium transport helicopters to augment wheeled transport and significantly reduce turnaround time. They can operate from the ammunition point or landing site directly to the dump site. Empty vehicles leave the dump site and proceed on the down route to the return control post. The RCP passes to the FRC confirmation of amounts delivered to the units, reforms empty vehicles into packets, and controls their return movement. It is headed by a transportation officer with a small staff with communications to the FRC. Here, individual vehicles are formed into packets. Different vehicles and drivers than those which originally arrived at the FRC may be involved. They are redirected to the ammunition point or landing site. The guides leave the vehicles at the RCP and are transported to the FRC to repeat their task cycle. The RCP can, when directed by the FRC, release vehicles which are no longer required. For large-scale dumping operations, it may be advantageous to position a recovery vehicle team, an ambulance, material handling equipment, and a spare task vehicle at the RCP. At the loading site, vehicles are refueled, serviced, and reloaded. The drivers are fed and rested. If the dumping program is a complex one and vehicles are required to run continuously, fresh drivers may take over the vehicles. Dumping programs are predicated on a continuous vehicle flow with full trucks moving forward, empty trucks moving individually back from the dump sites to the RCP, and packets of vehicles returning to the ammunition point or loading site. The dumping program is complete when all commodities have been dumped forward. Vehicles have returned to their parent unit location, been reloaded, and are ready to resume their normal tasking. Dumping operations are undertaken in response to specific operational requirements. The risks and commitment of resources must be considered as part of the overall evaluation. The coordinated efforts of soldiers, units, and staffs, as well as effective control by leaders at all levels are essential for success. All personnel must be familiar with their tasks, drills, and techniques to ensure the program runs smoothly.